Well, hello, my name is Dave. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about power carving. Something new for me and uh, I started to do this video for a nephew of mine, a gentleman named Clint. Uh, I've introduced a new tool to my uh, arsenal and that is a cut saw. Now cut saw is a brand name and it's spelled with a K. This is called a rotary sphere. It is a burr. I believe it's made out of a tungsten carbide and it's on a one quarter inch shaft. Now uh, all brand new to me. I had some ideas that I wanted to try. I bought a Harbor Freight uh, right angle die grinder. Uh, cost about fifteen dollars, so not a great investment. The sphere itself is only about twenty-one dollars. Uh, I had looked at the ArborTech uh, mini plane, and that was a hundred and nine. So I thought this would be uh, good for what I wanted to do. Uh, my ideas were with it was for uh, making a spoon, which is what this demo will be about today, as well as adding uh, bowls to say a cheese board or charcuterie board, a cutting board, that kind of thing. Also embellishing bowls on my lathe. Uh, it's great for doing uh, dimples, uh, quarter rounds, all kinds of things. So uh, this turned out to be uh, quite a, a good investment. It didn't take long to master uh, and I'm not quite sure I'm a master but I've learned to control it quite well so I don't get skid off and I don't get bounce, bounce, bounce which is important. Uh, also the idea of the right angle grinder as opposed to the pencil grinder <clears throat> it allows you to hold it steady and be able to use two hands to guide it with from one side or the other. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the other thing that got me going was looking for resources uh, I have a, a fire pile, uh, it's just a trash can and I give the wood to my neighbors to use in their smokers. But looking, realizing I got some examples here, uh, here's a piece, nice piece of kindling actually, but there's enough wood in here to make a small spatula out of, maybe small spoons out of. Uh, this one is definitely big enough to make a spoon out of. I could make a, you know, a bowl on one end and uh, there may be two, one, who knows, but it's long enough for a handle. Uh, the other piece I pulled out this morning was this one. This is big enough to make a tool handle out of, definitely big enough to make a, a spoon out of, any number of things. So rather than send it all to the burn pile, we've got some, some resources here. So to make this spoon, I'm going to use uh, what I have at hand. So the rotary burr, excellent. I have a large bandsaw over here, a spindle sandal back there, and a small vise over here, sandpaper, and uh, that's all we really needed to make the spoon. Now using a rotary burr is one way that like all things in woodworking there's many many ways to do the same thing. Now I could have gone uh, the traditional route using carving tools, but that's a skill set that I don't possess. I didn't want to, uh, at this point, have to learn how to sharpen all those tools so I could do a great job. So this was a way to, uh, I guess, a quicker way to, to make this product. So all in all, I have, uh, you know, the power tools I told you about. You need a big eraser. <laughs> Uh, I used a compass on this one because I wanted the, the bowl to be particularly round and I use Mike Mahoney's walnut finish for my food safe objects. Now one other thing, hearing protection. If you're going to use a pneumatic die grinder, these things are screaming loud, uh, dangerous loud to be quite frank about it. Uh, this is the 3M brand Peltor line, so this is their commercial line. This will remove 31 decibels of noise. I can put this on, have my three horsepower dust extractor running. This thing's screaming away and barely hear a thing. I love these things. These are terrific. They're comfortable. Uh, at the lathe, the face shield doesn't uh, fit over, so I had to have another pair a little bit smaller or earbuds. Uh, that's about it. I just wanted to take the time to uh, show you how to, how to do this. I have enjoyed it. Oh, let me cover one more thing. So I did this last night. My goal was to show my nephew how to use the, uh, the sphere. 
So I'm using a bandsaw, and in this video, you may see I'm not producing uh, some great safe practices. Uh, using the bandsaw to shape this with is uh, probably dangerous. Uh, I have a half inch blade on there. I should switch it to a 3 8 if I'm going to continue to do it. I'm uh, telling myself I'm being very careful, but we all know within an instant you can uh, have an accident on your hand. So I also have made a change. I've ordered a second sphere. Now this is the coarse and I've ordered the fine. That should come today and hopefully that will eliminate some sanding. Also I've ordered, which will come tomorrow, uh, they have another one that's about the shape of your finger on a quarter inch shaft and I think if I rough cut on the bandsaw, the shape of the spoon, and then use that to do my final shaping, uh, that will be faster, safer, and eliminate a little more sanding yet. Now the goal of uh, eliminating the sanding is the time it takes to make one of these. So this little guy last night probably took me 40 to 45 minutes to make. So they sell for anywhere from $8 to $30 on average. Now if you're making it for yourself, take all the time you want. But uh, if you're going to produce them to sell, you need to knock down the time it takes to produce it. For example, I made the round bowl because this thing will make a round bowl real fast. I made the, the handle wider. I made the handle thicker. I don't have a lot of uh, detail in all of this, so it took less time to make. So I think uh, it's my learning curve, of course. Uh, I'm not a master at it. This is actually only my eighth spoon to make. So let's take a look. Uh, I've got it chucked up in the uh, vise over here. Uh, we'll take a look at that and we'll go through the steps of what it takes to make this spoon. I hope this works out for you. You find it entertaining. Uh, learn a little bit about it and maybe go, hey, I could do that. So let's get to it. I'll be right back. Alrighty, so today we're going to try to make another spoon. And uh, I wanted to show you how uh, I set things up. So I've been using, as I've shown you before, this is the Cutsaw one quarter inch uh, burr. It's just a, uh, I believe it's a tungsten carbide. I'm not certain really. But uh, it does a really nice job. And it's on sim a simple uh, pneumatic uh, die grinder. So the first thing I've done is to find the shape of the bowl. Today I'm going to go for a particularly round, somewhat shallow, and a broader paddle, a broader handle with a handle at the end to catch on the back of your hand. So that's all i got to do. I have a clamp in the vise. I'll take the air hose or dust extraction and put it on the end here. That helps a lot. I'll clamp it on and then uh, I'll go make some racket. Okay, let's uh, set all of that up. Okay, before I get going making all this racket, I want you to know uh, absolutely necessary to have the hearing protection. Uh, just listen to the tool for a moment. That's terrible. I don't know how it came across on the camera yet, but we'll see. Other things I wanted to point out was when I did the drawing, I do a center line which helps me space out my uh, drawing a little bit better. Generally what I have found, even though I've drawn this quite well, is after I've cut the bowl, the bowl ends up being a little different, always seems to be, and then I have to redraw all of this uh, to come up with what I want. I haven't made enough of them yet that uh, I could just cut one out and go. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to move the camera so i got room to work, and... Uh, We'll get going. Should take but a, a few moments. Okay, here we go. The bus tractor is on. <coughs> we'll go to the uh, generally, just pull it into the side.
see it cuts uh, pretty aggressively, uh, easy to follow. I find that if I have the ball down at an angle this way or this way, this cuts the deepest going in this way. This way it seems to be a little more controllable. I've learned that going across this way leaves an awful lot of uh, scratches and whatnot, as well as this area and this area are harder to sand in the, in the final. So uh, let me give it another go here. All right, so the ball's coming out pretty darn nice. Slight little lump in here, and of course this is now the high side. So now I need to cut along this guy here. Uh, you can see when you get to this side, you get the little bit of tear out. So by bringing the, the bump in the camera, by bringing this over here, I should be able to finish that off and make a clean cut in here. So, let's see. All right, so nice round bowl. Feels like it's uh, the same thickness, both sides all the way around. No belly button in the middle. So now we go to the bandsaw and cut this out, and uh, then we go to the sander. Okay. All right, we're ready to cut it out. I'm gonna leave the dust extractor off to keep the noise down. Uh, all I plan on doing is cutting this out. I wanted to show you on the end, that's about the depth of the bowl, so I can cut from underneath without a problem. But uh, we'll see. Let's see what happens. Okay, remember, I don't expect to cut it dead on simply because we'll be standing the daylight out of it. But it's always good to get it, to get it closed. to do cutout so I don't flex the blade so bad that it uh, leaves a bunch of chatter. All right, there's a good start. All right, let's run it down the side now. Kind of sitting here wishing I drew my lines a little bit darker. Flex of the blade and the curve. That's 
something underneath is catching it. So there we go. So that's all rough turned or rough cut. And now I'll work on uh, the underside of the bowl from here and then up the sides of what the handle is. I'll generally start with this cut, swing it around to find the bowl, and then cut the shape of the handle the way I want it. And I'll generally, I'm going to bring the handle. I'm going to bring the handle so that it comes down, down, down. And so I'll cut that piece off the top. But uh, not bad for a start, but that's how you, uh, you make a spoon. Let me turn this off and uh, do a little drawing for myself real quick, and I'll be back. All right, I've drawn it out. So this is the just below the bottom of the bowl, the bowl meaning the inside of the spoon. And uh, I've come all the way across. I'm going to come up. But I'm going to draw it back down. As I get down to the, the wider portion here, my plan is to drop the handle down. So I'll make a cut with a bandsaw from up here as well and down. And then I'll taper out the thickness of the spoon here. But I want to try to this time to keep this a little bit thicker than I've been doing in the past. Uh, this should fit in the sanding drum really nice. So we'll see. Give me a minute and see if I can get it right or screw it up, right? All right, here we go. The rest we'll do on the, the drum sander. <clears throat> I'll put a little, uh, just a little downward, you know, the right through here, and then smooth this off down here. Uh, from the underside, you use the sander to make this curve. I still need to uh, do a few cuts around this bowl here, so I'm not sanding all day long. Be interesting what happens with this. So I'm gonna take a few moments and uh, make those cuts around the bowl. Okay, I've made my cuts around the bowl. You have to be really careful. I try to keep my hand, my left hand, behind the blade, my right hand all the way down here at the end. Hold it firm, move slowly, and come off. And what you're doing, of course, is watching the inside of the bowl here. Follow the curve. And I don't take any big pieces. You can see by all these, they're just little little cuts, man. And then same with the, the other side and the tip. Now the other thing to do is to watch looking down straight at the spoon that we're even. We don't have a high side on one side or the other. So from here we just go to the, the sander and start shaping it. And uh, we'll, we'll set that up for you in a second and we'll see. Okay, we're ready to start sanding. We will use the dust extractor this time.
light touches. You can see it catches pretty easy, so you know after this we go to hand sanding and smooth out anything that uh, we don't want to get too aggressive on. But uh, got the camera in the way here. I'd normally be moving a little bit. You need to watch all of this. I'm gonna let you go. We're to the part where we uh, sand the top of the, the bowl and then down the handle. And you can see I've uh, already done the back, run down the sides. I still have to do the top all the way down. But this part here, you really gotta make sure you hold it evenly, or else you'll get a you know a side you're supposed to pour out of, I suppose. But uh, Again, I want to. I'll draw that down just a little bit in here for a visual. nice a little too much here area through here in a minute and uh, a little bit more on the edge and the bottom and uh, I'll be back well we're all done uh, using the the drum sander uh, or spindle sander now a few of you may have noticed also that uh, that dust extraction system wasn't working very well and maybe some of you read in a uh, a manual somewhere that you're supposed to open the blast gate to make it work and you know, that is a, a true statement it works much better after you open the blast gate so anyway we're uh, all sanded up here nice and even around here I think uh, we've eased all the the edges uh, the bottom's got a nice uh, bowl I could leave it looking hand hewn but I generally don't some people really enjoy that but uh, doesn't look quite right to me so I, I'll go ahead and hand sand it all smooth it takes a little while to get the bowl smoothed out as well but uh, for a quick spoon I think this one uh, will do just fine it's got a good strong grip to it most of the ones I've made so far have uh, all had much thinner more graceful handles and a lot of people look at them and go hmm doesn't look right the other thing is I went for a totally round bowl this time generally I've brought the bowl in a lip back this way in an elliptical manner uh, I think that looks better there's a lot of wood right here but then you know, a lot of people want that strength for scooping and all that kind of thing so we'll see we'll sand it up and then hit it with some walnut oil and call it done okay and uh, no I don't really believe you want to watch me uh, hand sand all right thank you back in a bit Okay, we've done all our sanding. This is sanded uh, down to uh, 320 grit. I think it turned out uh, pretty nice for a quick quick job. I've been gone maybe 15 minutes since I signed off last. And uh, it's nice and smooth. It's got a good feel to it. Uh, I'll just oil it up, 
we're going to use uh, Mahoney's Walnut Oil. I always like that. And uh, let's see uh, how it turns out, okay? It's looking pretty nice. And the bowl. So, Mike Mahoney's uh, walnut oil is a uh, food safe finish. I usually put a couple coats on. The bowl is always hard to sand. Now I do have a new uh, burr coming that's uh, supposed to be fine. And I'm real curious to see how well that works and see if that eliminates uh, a little more time and sanding and whatnot. Now you don't sell these spoons for very much, so you got to get your time down and come up with a design that uh, you can crank it out. That was the purpose of this one, having uh, the wider, thicker handles. It took much less time to sand. It was easier to cut on the bandsaw. You really got to watch your cuts every time you make a, a deeper cut or a variant in line. It becomes harder to uh, sand out and again, much, much, much more time consuming. And so that looks pretty good. Now, I did want to point out, in particular, I am not a master. This is my eighth spoon to make. So you can see it doesn't take a rocket scientist to uh, figure it all out and get it done. But uh, having the right tool. Well, okay, there we go. So in uh, a few short minutes, we made a wooden spoon, something we can use on our own home, something we can sell, something we can return to the uh, firewood pile if we have to. Uh, my idea for making these things is to give myself something else to do. I'm retired and boy do I look forward to having something to do each day. Uh, I like creating new things, learning new things, uh, learning to use a pneumatic burr, something I hadn't done, not in my skill set, learning to make a spoon, again brand new. So each time we do something like this, uh, I believe it's good for our brain, it's uh, good to continue to learn new things and understand new things. So I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you uh, give this a go, I think you'll find it to be uh, fun and entertaining and you'll find that you can do a lot of things with uh, these different tools. So please, Understand? I appreciate you watching and taking your time. Hope you have a great day. Keep on creating. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.